हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू ईसी एकेडमी In this lecture, let us understand resolution of discrete time signal into impulses. Here, we'll understand how a discrete time signal can be decomposed into weighted sum of impulses. In our previous lecture, we understood what is a discrete time signal. A sequence of values or samples that are defined at discrete time intervals or discrete time instants are known as discrete time signal. So the discrete time signals are represented only at the discrete intervals of time. For example, if we take x of n is equal to 2, comma 4, comma 0, comma 3, and here the arrow mark for this sequence is at 4 which means this is the value of x of n at n is equal to 0. So this is the value of x of n at n is equal to minus 1 and this is the value of x of n at n is equal to 1 and this is the value of x of n at n is equal to 3. So this is an example for a discrete time signal. Now why we need a decomposition of signal? We need the decomposition of signal because it simplifies analysis and processing. So it will simplify the analysis of signal and also it will simplify the processing of the signal. It will break the signal into fundamental building blocks for easier manipulations. So it will divide or it will break the signal into different fundamental blocks. So if we have different fundamental blocks, we can easily manipulate those blocks according to our requirement. So for this purpose, we'll go for decomposition of signals. The unit impulse function can be represented as shown in this figure. So from this figure, we understood that the unit impulse function is having the value as one at n is equal to zero. And for other values of n, the impulse function is having the value 0. So the impulse function delta of n will be equal to 1 for n is equal to 0. For other values of n, it will be 0. Now, if we consider a delta function, delta of n minus k, so this is a time shift operation. So delta function should be shifted towards right side k divisions. So here minus represents shifting of signal towards the right side. If we have plus sign that represents we need to shift the signal towards left side. So since we are having negative sign, we need to shift this signal towards the right side k divisions. So if we shift this signal towards the right side k divisions, we will obtain this signal as you can observe here. So in this signal, we have shifted the delta function k divisions and this is the representation of delta of n minus k. So to understand this, let us take few examples. If we take delta of n minus 1, so which means we need to shift the delta function towards the right side one division. Similarly, delta of n minus 4 we need to shift the delta function towards the right side four divisions. Similarly, we have written delta of n minus k delta function shifted towards the right side k divisions. And if we have delta of n plus 2, which means delta function should be shifted towards left side two divisions. So this you need to remember, which is a time shift operation. Now, Delta function is represented as delta of n minus k, which is nothing but delta of n minus k will be equal to 1 for n is equal to k as we have observed in this waveform and delta function will be equal to 0 for n not equal to k. Now what is the importance of selecting this n is equal to k, which means out of the given sequence, we want to select only a particular value. At that case, we need to multiply this sequence with delta of n function so that it can select a particular value. So here the delta function is shifted 
towards kth position so that we can select the particular signal at n is equal to k in x of n. So what happens? If we multiply this signal with x of n, so all other signal will be multiplied with 0 and the output will be equal to 0. Only the signal at n is equal to k will be multiplied with 1 so that we will get the particular signal. That's why we can say n is equal to k will act as selector which means it will select the particular signal from the available sequence. So whenever we take delta of n minus k and for k if we take any value such type of delta function is known as Kronecker delta function. Now let us understand the multiplication of signal with unit impulse. So if we take the signal x of n and if we multiply it with delta of n minus k so it will isolate the value of x of k at n is equal to k. As you can observe here we are isolating only this value of x of n when we are multiplying entire x of n sequence with delta of n minus k because we are getting only that value and all other values are 0. So we can write x of n delta of n minus k will be equal to x of k delta of n minus k. So as you can see x of n is entire sequence but we are getting the output only at n is equal to k that's why we have written at the output x of k that is multiplied with delta of n minus k that's why we can replace while doing the operation x of n with x of k because we are selecting the signal only at that particular value of n so the impulse function picks out the value of x of n at a specific time instant k. So only at specific time instant k will obtain the output x of k. Now let us understand summation of weighted impulses. A discrete time signal x of n can be expressed as sum of scaled and shifted impulse function as shown in this equation. So x of n can be written as summation of k is equal to minus infinity to infinity x of k delta of n minus k. So this we have understood how we will obtain x of k multiplied with delta of n minus k. So that is understood only for one value of x of n. So if we want to select multiple values from x of n at that case we need to take different values for k and we need to take summation of each values. So each term x of k into delta of n minus k represents the contribution of x of n at time k. So summing these components reconstructs the original signal. For example, if we take x of n is equal to 2, 4, 0, 3, which is a finite sequence, so here as I told you the arrow mark is at 4 which means this is the value of x of n at n is equal to 0. This is at n is equal to minus 1. This is at n is equal to 1 and this is at n is equal to 2. So while representing x of n as a function of weighted sum of impulses we need to take the same value for k for representation which means to write the given sequence in this form. So what we'll do, we'll take 2 and we'll substitute in this place x of k and then we'll take delta of n and in place of k we'll write minus 1. So the equation will be equal to 2 into delta of n plus 1. So that is what we have obtained. Since we are having other sequence also, in between we will take the summation or plus sign and we will write the next value which is 4 and in place of delta of n minus k so we will put k is equal to 0 so we will get delta of n so the value will be 4 delta of n and the next value in the sequence is 0 so 0 multiplied with delta of n minus 1 
it will be equal to 0. That's why we have not written that sequence. And next value is 3. 3 multiplied with delta of n minus 2. So here we have substituted the value of k is equal to 2. So we obtain the sequence x of n is equal to 2 delta of n plus 1 plus 4 delta of n plus 3 delta of n minus 2. So what you need to do? You need to take the same sequence at x of k and for delta of n minus k for this k value you need to substitute different values of k corresponding to the value of the sequence. So for the first value you need to take k is equal to minus 1. For the second value you need to take k is equal to 0. For third value you need to take k is equal to 1 and for fourth value you need to take k is equal to 2 in this equation so that you can obtain this value and you need to remember these values will depend upon where is the origin for example if you have origin at 0 which means this is the value of x of n at n is equal to 0 this will be the value of x of n at n is equal to minus 1 and this will be the value of x of n at n is equal to minus 2 and towards the right side this will be the value of x of n at n is equal to 1 so at that case we will get n is equal to minus 1 minus 2 0 and 1 so you need to take the same value for k so that you can obtain the summation of this sequence in the delta function form okay so first what we did we identified the non-zero values of x of n and their position so these are the non-zero values of x of n and these are the position of x of n write each term as a scaled impulse function so after identifying the each position we have written the given sequence in the form of impulse function so there are different applications of signal decomposition majorly in the field of signal processing so the signal decomposition is the basis for digital filtering and transforms so signal decomposition is the basis for digital filtering and transforms for example we can use fourier transform for digital signal decomposition it is essential for analyzing system in time domain so to analyze the signal in terms of time domain we need signal decomposition what are the advantages it will simplifies the mathematical representation so mathematical representation are simplified it provides efficient computation and manipulation in digital signal processing systems so for efficient computation and manipulation we can use the signal decomposition so what are the real world uses so we can use signal decomposition for audio and video compression and we can use for telecommunication and signal reconstruction so finally to summarize the thing which we have understood the discrete time signal can be expressed as a sum of weighted delayed impulses so as you can see digital signal can be represented as the sum of weighted delays as shown in this equation the unit impulse function serves as fundamental building blocks for signal reconstruction so for signal reconstruction we can use the impulse function which is a basic or fundamental building block understanding this concept is essential for signal processing and system analysis so for signal processing as well as the system analysis the signal decomposition is very much important this is about resolution of discrete time signal into impulses hope you have understood the topic thank you